Hello class set. A very good day to all of you. Today we are going to continue and conclude the chapter the lesson, the report on 1857. In the previous class we learned about the several causes that were responsible for the outbreak of the report of 1857, which is also known as the first war of Indian independence and the Sepoy mutiny. In the previous class, we learned about the immediate cause that was responsible for the report. And what are the immediate cause? The immediate cause was the use of grease cartridges. Now today we will just try to learn, understand where the revolts took place and who led the revolt. Though you need not go in detail, but I'm telling you so that it will be easier for you to understand. The results are important. Okay, there are 10 to 12 points in your textbook. I'll be explaining some of them and you are required to know at least minimum of 6 to 8 points. Now first and foremost, the revolt took place in and around central India. That is Delhi, Merut, Lucknow, Jhansi and Allahabad and so on. These here as you see were the main centers of the revolt. Okay, here Delhi. Now let's say Jhansi, Lucknow, Merut, Allahabad. These were the places where the revolt took place. Okay. Now after Mangal Pandey was had, we know that revolt started spreading out. And in Delhi, the revolt was led by. In Delhi, the revolt was led by Bahadur Shah Jafar. The people in and around Delhi requested, asked, persuaded Badur Sahib Jafar to take or the lead the revolt of 1857. And in the beginning, in the early phases, what happens? Badur Sahib Jafar and the Indians, they are able to capture Delhi. Okay? And they are very happy. But this victory is very, very short lived. Not only Delhi, but in other places as well. Then, in Kanpur, in Kanpur, the revolt was led by Nana Srahir, who was the adopted son of Peshwa Baji Rao the second. Then also what happens, Nana Srahir and his people, they are able to defeat and capture Kanpur. Then also again what happens, the victory remains short-lived. In Lucknow, it was led by Hajrat Mahal and finally in Jhansi, you know about it, it was led by Rani Lakshmi Bai. In the beginning, in all the places, what happens? They are able, the Indians are able to recapture the territories which were under the British East India Company. But the victory remains very, very short lived. And finally, what happens? The British East India Company is able to crush down the revolt that was what they call led by or the rebels as they say the people who took the revolt and all they captured some of the places but at the end finally what happens the British East India Company is able to crush down the revolt and recapture or retake those places or those regions which were taken by the Indians okay that was the places the Areas and all that are not very very important for you all, but just for the sake of information, I'm telling you. Now, first and foremost, the results of the report, these are very very important for you all, okay? And in the beginning, I told you there are 8 to 10 to 12 points in the textbook. I'll be explaining a few of them, and please do memorize at least 6 to 8 points. The first important result was first and foremost as I told you in the very beginning I have been telling it again and again what happens the Indians were successful to some extent and the first important result of the revolt of 1857 was the end of the the end of the rule of East India Company because of the revolt of 1857, the rule of East India Company, East India Company which had been taking or ruling India since 1757 till 1857 comes to an end. This is the end of the rule of British East India Company. So what happens, as the rule of British East India Company comes to an end, 
India is now ruled by the British Parliament. British Parliament. Now, India is directly under the administration of the Parliament of England. So whatever laws and regulations were passed there, that were applicable as well as in India and Queen Victoria was declared as the Empress of India. Queen Victoria was declared as the Empress of India. Okay? The rule of East India Company comes to an end. Now what happens? India is administered or governed by the British Parliament and Queen Victoria is declared as the Empress of India. Okay? Now third one. Now what happens is Queen Victoria issues a proclamation. This is a proclamation. Okay? Queen Victoria or this Queen's proclamation is made. And in the proclamation, it is told that the Indians, the Queen, would be looking after the what you call welfare of the Indian people. So, a proclamation is made. According to the proclamation, it is told that the Queen or the British government would now look after the welfare of the Indian people. Okay? Now, the fourth result, doctrine of lapse, was abolished. This was one of the policies of the British government to capture the territories. Okay? What are the doctrine of lapse? We have already learnt about it. There is a doctrine issued under the law, the law is according to which if a ruler of a particular kingdom or a region died without a natural successor, then that property or territory would automatically be lapsed or taken by the British East India Company. The adopted successor or the heir could not succeed or take over the region. So what happens is, doctrine of lapse is abolished. Doctrine of long lapses abolished, which means now the Indian rulers and the leaders now they were allowed to adopt successors to the throne or successors, successors to their family if they did not have their natural successors. Okay, the fifth one was general pardon was to be given to all the rebels. General pardon was to be given to all the rebels. That means the, all the people who revolted against the Britishers, who took part in the revolt, were given what you call forgiven for the participation, except for those people who had killed British officials. So there was punishment for the ones or for those rebels who had killed the British officials. For the rest of the common people, those who had participated in the revolt. So general pardon was given to them. Okay? Now, the sixth one, the sixth important result was the British government declared, told that they would not interfere. No interference in the social and religious customs. So it was declared that the British government of the British henceforth would not interfere in the social and the religious customs of the people, which was one of the reasons for the revolt of 1857. Now the seventh one, next one if you see, is that the British government declared that Indians would be getting opportunities Okay, they will be getting the chances in the or included in the administration of the country. Now, the Indians would be given opportunities in the administration.
they would get opportunities in the administration of the country. That was the next reason. Now what happens is what we call the, the next reason, eighth one. The army was reorganized. Okay, early it was in such command of the Indians also. Now it was reorganized and the British armies were strengthened. Added to that, what happens? The important thing to be noted is now the artillery was not under the command of the Indians, or the artillery were strictly kept by the Britishers, or the British soldiers had a full control on the artillery. Okay, so these are some of the important results of the revolt of 1857. The first one, as you see, is what happens. The rule of British East India Company comes to an end. Then what happens? India is now governed or looked or administered under the British Parliament and Queen Victoria is declared as the Empress of India. After that what happens? Queen Victoria passes a proclamation declaring that the Britishers would look after the welfare of the Indian people. Third fourth one, doctrine of lands was abolished. Now, the Indians could adopt successors to their throne. Then, the fifth one, a general pardon was granted to all the rebels who had participated in the revolt, except for the ones who had killed the British officials. And added to that, it was declared that there would not be any interference in the social and religious customs of the Indian people. Then, it was declared that Indians would be getting opportunities to participate in the governance or the administration of the country. Then, the army was reorganized, strengthened, and one important thing to be noted here was that artillery was kept strictly under the British control. So with that, we come to the end of the chapter, the revolt of 1857. Please do learn some of the important causes among the political causes that we have social and the religious causes, military causes and the immediate causes. And the next one, you do need to know the results of the revolt of 1857. As an assignment, please go to page number 105. You have some questions there in page number 105E. E, go through it, solve it and learn it at the same time okay so this much for today the next class we begin with the new chapter okay stay safe and thank you and have a good day